And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Nightfall Control. As y'all know, this is kind of a, a pet deck of mine, a deck that I enjoy playing. Um, this is a deck that's um, one where whenever your opponent gets paired against it and they see Targon at Shadow Isles and your champions are Diana and Nocturne, they're going to be thinking they're playing against an aggro deck. But our deck is not an aggro deck. We are certainly a control deck with Vengeance, Ruination, um, and all sorts of invoke cards and cheap removal. Um, a deck where you get to play um, Hush, Pale Cascade, Unspeakable Horror, three awesome two mana cards. Now, as you saw with the, the last game, if you watched us play Aurelian Soul Leona, Hush looked pretty bad. It was kind of surprisingly bad. Um, it was just always stuck in our hand, never had a good use for it um, throughout multiple games, like basically every single game. So the metagame may be kind of changing away from being a metagame where Hush is amazing. You know, we didn't see any like Fioras or um, uh, uh, Lee Sins. We didn't have any attacking like Zoe's or um, Ezreal's that we got to Hush and block. You know, we never really got to have anything good with the Hush. So basically, so long story short <clears throat> with that is I've decided not to play three Hush. We're going to just play two Hush instead of playing three. And I want an extra star shaping because right now, like how the metagame's turning, a lot more people are playing like Ezreal decks and Draven decks and just Noxus decks in general. Um, you know, like we uh, Twisted Fate Noxus decks even. Um, you know, so with, with more Noxus decks, like there's a lot more Nexus damage right now. And with us playing a slower control deck, I want to have a, some extra ways to heal our Nexus. And so I'm going to be playing a third star shaping, just another really good top end card that also heals our Nexus. Um... But, uh, yeah, so basically, our champions in this deck, I guess if you haven't seen this deck before, uh, you know, played it one other time before, but if you haven't seen it, it's basically our champions are going to be used as removal spells. Diana, having that quick attack challenger, um, Nocturne, being able to grant something vulnerable, and having a lot of power, like, these are really good removal spells, and so it just kind of helps us play that long game. Like, we want to just play a very long game with this and grind the opponent down. And eventually use all of these Celestial Invoke cards to win a late game. Um, use plenty of removal. You know, have usually people will like overextend in a deck like this. Not really expect ruination. Get some good ruinations. And um, yeah, that, that's that's what our deck's all about. So let's give it a try. These should be some longer games. The kind of card that we don't want to see with this kind of deck is Aurelian Soul because it's really hard to defeat Aurelian Soul in late games. But I think that we are... Um, hey, Rodeni, thank you so much for the raid. I think that we are um, well positioned against... Like, better positioned against non-Aurelian Soul decks. Welcome, everybody. Than what Aurelian Soul is because we don't have, like, the 10-mana card in our deck. We have, like, both of our champions are very useful against aggro and midrange with Diana and Nocturne. Okay, Lee Sin, Zed. Good thing we just... <laughs> that's what happens, right? I, I take out a Hush. We immediately play against Lee Sin. Makes sense. Um, so we need we need Vengeance for Lee Sin, and, like, Vengeance plus Unspeakable Horror or Vile Feast can, can get rid of a Bastion. Now, I know that's, like, not for a while... So I don't know if I'm supposed to keep that in the right away because then they they, they just play like a, a Zed and we're in trouble. Let's go with... Mm, I'll still keep it. The Road Raid. All right, I'll start prediction. I thought... Cabo, weren't you doing predictions? Well, I'll start this one. Okay, so the Spacey Sketcher is a good draw of turning on the um, turning on the Nightfall for the Unspeakable Horror. The world I do like Spell Thief. They have tons of great spells. Looking into the future, I see purple. Of course, that's not really a good trade for me. Them having a million gems. Their deck likes seeing all those gems. Ah, 
man, I definitely wish I would have had Vile Feast last turn. We swim within the flows of magic. Yeah, this is an awkward start. See if we get a deny out of their hands. Waters are still. Okay. So so far they've had uh, um, Nopify and Zenith Blade. Deep meditation. <laughs> Don't even get Nopify. I'd like them to just play Lee Sin right here. And then only have three mana and I could ruination. Master yourself. Master your enemy. Okay, well I like that. I don't think they can deny a ruination with three mana. I don't think they had a moon silver. Without a sound. Zed. <laughs> Found all the black spears. I gotta behold another celestial for supernova. So maybe I just take falling comet. Yeah, I guess I'll just take the falling comet. I don't know. It's definitely one of those two. Obviously, the supernova has a higher upside, but we'll just take the falling comet. The third black spear isn't super valuable so this does give me like a, a you know finally probably like my best card to use spacey sketcher on this is why we're only playing two spacey sketcher not three in this deck ideally we have the the one drop the other one drop the or mountain goat something like that that makes something that makes our spacey sketcher a little better um of course this is definitely the attack that i really like to see You know, no Zenith Blade first or anything like that. So they got six, six cards in hand that we don't know about. So that's a Zed's Shadow Shift. So this would take out two Zeds, basically. For me, we haven't played against too much Targon today. Played against a little bit, but not, not an overwhelming amount. 
Man, Eclipse Dragon is ridiculous. Change is coming. You cannot win. Look at me leveling up that uh, Nocturne. Where are we at? Two. Two out of five. Basically already leveled up. I think I may just pass. Yeah, I just pass. Because I don't want to, like, play, like, an infinite mind splitter, then they play Lee Sin, and then Zenith Blade, and all this other stuff. Just going to pass for now. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Even at war. You remain so calm. Would panicking help, brother? It's gonna be Your difficult. It's gonna be difficult for Elisa to beat me with me having all of this removal. <laughs> and I'm that's that's the reason why I didn't play the ten drop. Because they kind of threw away those concussive palms a little bit earlier and it kind of felt like they had another. So two Zeds are gone from their deck. Two uh, two Zeds, two Eye of the Dragon. Two Mentor the Stones. Only one Lee Sin so far, but I got all this other stuff. So yeah, you know, like well, that's that's the thing about our deck. We're just a control deck that you know makes it where it's going to be pretty difficult for them I to win. Only I can endure the dragon's fury. We haven't really seen any denies or bastions yet, though. So going with the Fallen comics, I have that plus vengeance. There we go. Get rid of all of their threats. Didn't even need Hush. Evil. The Black Spears ended up being very good. You know, it looked kind of weird having the three Black Spears, but, you know, we had the two of them to get rid of the two Zeds, and then we had another one there to get rid of an Eye of the Dragon. They ended up being pretty good. All right, Dustbringer is a card I always love. I always love having this card um, in my opener. It makes a lot of my other cards better. Um, Twisted Fate Fizz. You know, it's this card that I'm not sure about. I actually kind of want to keep it, because I think that they're going to be going wide. Since I already have like all sorts of uh, good early stuff to do, I think I can afford to we keep the once. ruination. It's our time. Oh, sorry. Witness perfection, meatbags. All right, let's go with the Priestess. All three of those cards are awesome, right? Like, the all three of those are awesome. But we'll just take the Traveler. Safety disengaged. The thing is, we didn't... Like, think about, like, last game, even though, like, how we completely... Uh, ran our opponent out of cards and everything. And we didn't even have, like, our champions. <laughs> like, this game, we had one Nocturne last game. It was a very good Nocturne. Taking down an Eye of the Dragon that had been Zenith Bladed. Join me if you want to live. We're at 
Two out of six. Deal me in. I'm kind of just planning on going Ruination this next turn. I don't know, maybe I don't need to do that. Moonlight Affliction. Yeah, we don't need a Ruination yet. This card works pretty well with both of our champions. With both of our champions being some cheaper cards. Look within. So I was kind of imagining that their deck would go wider than what they're going. Can you improve perfection? Is it fates at five? If they pass turn, they create an ignition and then they burn the top card. They don't get to draw it. They don't really get to pass the turn. Same thing applies still. <clears throat> I could still pass. I guess, you know, same thing still applies. because I'd have, like, the Moonlight Affliction to, like, double hush these things and then block them. Be playing Dustbringer this turn. Never lost a fair game. Eyes open. Only a fool would enter battle unprepared. Yeah, good turn for them. That was um, too early of a ruination by me. Good lesson. Good lesson learned by me. Yeah, I, I would not do that ruination that early again. You know, I had the like I said, I had the moonlight affliction for the double uh, wiggly burble fish. But good lesson learned. I I misplayed this. Yeah, like I misplayed this game. Um, good lesson. Yeah, mess this game up. Yeah, good lesson learned. Yep. 
Alright, so now we're playing against um, Yasuo Riven, so... Um, you know, I... It's good to, to understand, you know, like, why, you know, why you lost and, and things like that, and um, can see, like, the, you know, you had control over that game, and, and that was a game I did have control over, that I, I could have put myself in a much, much better position than what I did. It's a good game to learn from. And that's the thing, like, it's okay to, like, make mistakes and, and lose games, you know, just try to learn from them and, and uh, you know, improve for future games. That's what's always important. So don't don't dwell on, don't beat yourself up. Um, if you make mistakes and lose, it's okay. Let's get rid of these two. <laughs> Basically the same hand. I'm cold, I'm hungry, and there's rocks in me boots. I'll show the hunters. All right, so they got this one too. A card that I don't really want. To kill. To serve the greater good. Oh yeah, that's a pretty sparkle fly. And no, I'm not. I'm not going to have my serpent challenge the three one. The three one can't get through the spacey sketcher anyway. I'd much rather have my serpent challenge a three four. We were peaceful. Right, because I can. I can have the serpent pair with the pale cascades and take down like a riven. Or a Yasuo. And that would be much better for me. That's a great draw. That's a Lari Priestess. That's just a perfect draw step. Um, and, and you know, like that last game also, I, I chose the wrong card, right? Like whenever we played that, that game, both gold, you know, like, yeah, I, I took like the card, that four drop. So I took the wrong card with Solari Sister last time. Uh, this time... Not sure exactly what I'm scared of as far as these cards go. I guess I'm just gonna take the Golden Sister. I mean I guess it's just like more Yasuos, right? I guess I'll just take this falling comment. Is a leaf's only purpose to fall. Cause that's a, that's amazing for us. Like that that combination right there, zero mana, two one challenger plus pale cascade to take down Yasuo. Like that's that's just such a win. Join the hunters, they said. I assume they attacked. They could pass. Good afternoon, Michael. Yeah, no, you're you're right, Formula. I I that was a bad ruination by me. Yep, I definitely made mistakes last game. These hands, no metal and magic. They're just not cards I'm scared of. Sharpen the blades, secure the kill. Their sense travels on the night air. You're out one. Hmm. Find your own light within the darkness. Well, it's like I guess I play Diana, but yeah, that's perfectly fine with me. Perfectly fine with me. It's my time. Believe or burn. Whoa. We're getting aggro up in here. Oh, 
heart and blade both broken. Eleven mana. Hey, mind splitter. The moon is our queen, the night, her kingdom. All right, so I'll just pass turn with them having uh, eight mana that they're wasting. I feel, um, you know, fairly decent as far as. Winning the game from here. Okay, so Nocturne's still at zero. <laughs> Not the best Nocturne deck. I just pass, they pass. That's fine. requires a sharp blade. Need more patience. That's what I did not have last game whenever I lost. Did not have the patience. More patience. Line up. The greater good. Watch, learn. Quick attack. Ah, uh, it sings to me. Overwhelm. So I could save three life by playing the hush. Three life could matter. Hmm. Come, a new phase I definitely wish I had the mana for both of these. That'll do. Cool. That works. I need just a moment. So it's unlikely they are able to stop my Diana now with it having the spell shield. Unlikely. I am surprised they played the Yasuo. Um, yeah, even just in in the face of a Diana. They may have had like Steel Tempest, right? Like where they could only stun during combat. So that's why the Moon Glow uh, worked out well. And there we go. Twisted Fate Swain. I was saying, like, these kind of matchups are becoming more and more popular these days. And that's why we're playing less Hush. Unguided None, howdy. Welcome. Thanks for resubbing. Nine months? Man, that's so many months. Thank you so much. No! I drew both hush? Can we go back and get like the other cards we had? Both hush? At least I have something to discard a space sketcher. Honey! 
need more runs! Not sure if I want to use Black Spear on this thing. I don't think so. Going to 15. I don't really want to do anything with, the, with this. Uh, Spacey Sketcher and Krusty Codger. Yeah, you can tell they're expecting an aggro deck. They were not expecting that card. I suppose Hush could be semi-useful there. Then here's where I paint my constellation. Dusk approaches. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. Our light grows brighter. No more lies. I will be heard. Cool. Looks like could, you know, Moon Silver Black Spear, but that's not something I really wanted to do. Hey, After Wizard, how's it going? Gotta go with the flow. Awesome. Hey, yeah, we're playing Control in Rune Terra. It's possible. So where's our three star shapings at? We got three of those. Where are they at? Ignorant brawl. Sun and moon back to back. Believe or burn. So I think I think Nocturne Fervor has been like their only spell so far. Think. Night flowers upon my blade. Hey, Anna, new to the game. Awesome. Hope you're enjoying it. This I uh, have like this uh, little resource here for new players. There you go. So yeah, okay. Uh, why did I say the follower, not the champion? Um, basically, so my champion was a. It's it's basically just their uh, power and health on those two. Um, I had a, a two one champion. So even if I pale cascade it, it's only going to be a four two. So it'd still die in combat. Um, my one two, um, like they had all two twos. My one two couldn't actually trade with any of their things. But if I use a pale cascade on it, then it turns into a three three. So it can kill one of their things, and then it also stays alive. So it's more of a, a power health consideration for using the, the Pale Cascade uh, right there. You're welcome. So again, I'm pretty sure Noxion Fervor is the only card they've used so far. You leave me no recourse. 
experimental as moonlight. It's the same kind of thing, you know, like our, you know, is only one power, need to kind of pale cascade it to get it up to two so we can start uh, trading with these. stuff though Her kingdom. we haven't seen a star shaping or an eclipse dragon yet um i think one solari priestess so far Right, that thing doesn't have vulnerable anymore. And I know I could, I know I could have my Nocturne challenge the O3, um, but with and you know do it like the other way around. But with Nocturne only having one health, it's just so vulnerable with just one health that I was willing to trade it for a three-two. That card's useful. I don't I don't know which one of those is, is the best, to be honest. I just want to play something to get this nightfall card. I guess I was probably supposed to do this petty officer, wasn't I? So what are their last two cards? By playing that I don't have Black Spears available. I don't want to I don't want to play this on my turn and let them have like the three two stun and stun this thing before I get to just go to attacks. I'm not going to use the gems just to do a little bit of damage. The gems can be useful for turning on Nightfall later on. That should Powder Keg, <laughs> right? That should do Powder Keg, deal 2 damage. That's what I should do. Born a patrician, I became a soldier. So I go down to 4 with an open attack. Their time has come. Such little lives. We were peaceful once. All right, what you got, Lunari Priestess? That's a good draw. Ridden stars are great beyond, you know, because obviously I can't play great beyond now. It would be for in a couple of turns. I guess I go that route. 
Ren and Stars right now, though, could be pretty enticing, a lot of damage. No more hiding. Cool, no Twisted Fate or Make It Rain or anything like that. That's a good draw. That's a very good draw. Because now, even if they, you know, like they go Leviathan, I can still just Unspeakable Horror my own thing and uh, kill it and then double Black Spear. I guess they can't Leviathan anymore, and they probably would have Leviathan if they already did have it. So I guess it was probably pretty safe for me to just play a Black Spear that turn. Feel me in. I'm a people person. And there we go. All right, three and one. My one loss being my fault of being not patient enough. Been much more patient the last two games. A little late now. All right, there we go. We got some Zoe Diana. Similar kind of deck. They're going with Zoe. Let's... Kind of want to keep all of it. I'm going to look in the Black Spear and Pale Cascade. For now. <laughs> when to get a dog cam? I mean, I basically have the dog cam, right? I have, like, the dog bed set up behind me. Usually you see one of my two dogs, Puppy and Harvey, are my two dogs. Usually you see one of them in the dog bed. I bear a message from... Oh, hey, what's that? Let's do it over there! This is the Shadow Isles board that I'm currently using. It's the spooky board. All spookified and everything. We were peaceful once. Alright, so now they don't have Pill Cascade to save Zoe. So let's just get rid of it right now. So we traded one for one. They get the super cool star chart. I get a spiderling win for them. So that is a champion. Her flowers bring the moonlight with them. Ooh, Diana. I'll just play a Duskbringer here. Just you know, have another thing to like block their Duskbringer. I cannot turn back. Your heretic. Okay, and I'm fine with that. Just basically not just take the two damage. Because we're going to be sitting and chilling. I guess I could just take the damage, though, because I have star shaping. Yeah, maybe I should have. Maybe I should have just taken the damage. Well, I mean, I couldn't... I Like, they would challenge my 1-1 one, one and have my 2-1... And have the 2-1 just deal two damage to me. Right, like if I if I don't play the two one, that's what happens. Mount Scryer is a great card because this this matchup is going to be determined about who has more card advantage, who invokes more. Especially for how slow my opponent's playing, this game is going to last another half hour, and so it's going to be who can outlast the other person. So a card like Mountain Scryer is very good. Argon's history is in each stone and star. So I had to behold another Celestial card for this Cosmic Rays. But it does look pretty nice. That's not a card I hardly ever take. I'm going to do this while my Nightfall is turned on, actually. Interesting. That's going to be a fast way to level up both of our champions. A faster way, at least. All right, but this is going to be a very long game, Michael. So just because we have Ruination doesn't mean that Cosmic Rays is going to be useful. 
with them having all these invoke cards, I'm going to want Ruination for, like, the larger invoke cards. So Cosmic Rays is something that I can use before that on all this stuff. Now we have to find more um, invoke, of course, because we need another Celestial card to behold Night to be able to play sense. that. Follow the path. Cloaked in silver light. All right, found our champions. Our nocturnes, at least. And they got more mana than us, so we'll just pass turn. Wow. That was a... There's no way that was a good play, right? There's no way that was a good play, right? Night flowers upon my blade. Can't have been. All right, so other okay. Besides that, we can definitely assume that that's a, a Diana in hand whenever they played that written in stars. Because um, if it was a Zoe, they would have played the Zoe. You would think. Calm mind and open heart greet the night. I guess it's possible they could have... See, I want to use this mana, but I guess it's possible they could have a Withering Mail. I wouldn't think they would, but I guess it's possible. Man, that was a very surprising play by them. Bask in her radiant blessing. And of course, this is Grant vulnerable for the rest of the game. But then again, I am like helping them turn on their other Nocturne. Or sorry, their other Diana. If I kill this Diana. <clears throat> With 10 cards in hand, they cannot pass. Or, I mean, they can, but they shouldn't. Cool. All right, so I just enabled their four, their one mana four four Diana, but I do have a black spear. Um, I guess it's probably going to be a five five though. Right, it'll probably be leveled up real soon. I guess okay, they're at two out of four. Her light is our sword. Her womp, our armor. Cold and unforgiving as moonlight. Yeah, our deck is is really good. It's it's definitely kind of like my my current pet deck. We have we have answers for everything in the format with this deck for sure. So they could have like Pale Cascade, which would level up, which would give it plus two. So like Unspeakable Horror still wouldn't kill it if they go Pale Cascade. Okay, no Pale Cascade. Is our way. I kind of want to just block with the Spacey Sketcher and then go Unspeakable Horror, but this is a Nocturne also. It's not just an Unspeakable Horror. Um, maybe. I could see Plaza Scouts being difficult. I'd have to play it more. Play against Plaza Scouts more. I'm not sure. But, like, that's why I'm playing all these Black Spears right now. This Black Spear is just something necessary for Misfortune. Um, you know, so having having that, like, three mana card to kill Misfortune is awesome. Then, you know, like, you're, like, you know, like, the deck's playing, you know, like, the multiple Ruinations, that's usually awesome. 
you have all these invoke cards that can get rid of a plaza. Um, but right now, like the the champions you see a whole lot of are like the three mana ones. You know, Misfortune. You see Twisted Fate a good amount right now, but then Draven and Jinx and Ezreal. All of those, like Black Spear, is really good against all of those champions. The Severshade Stalker is going to be clutch. Yeah, and that's yes, yeah, no, good, good call there, Devil. Both of our champion spells are like that's that's a big strength about this deck. I talked about it last time we played it, but I forgot about that this time. Is that both Diana and Nocturne have amazing champion spells, right? Like you have Pale Cascade and Unspeakable Horror are your champion spells, and you're like, we're playing three Pale Cascades and three Unspeakable Horrors. This still doesn't level up Nocturne. I could play. I could just get rid of this Evershade or the Spacey Sketcher with another Evershade Stalker if I want. Nah. Let's just make this attack. Let's just do that. You cannot sway me. Hey. Stop. I didn't think about like passing with them having all this mana, but decide against that. Because with having like these ruination, 16 life, I'm I'm fine. But yeah, this is this is why I wanted to grab the cosmic insp like that Evershade Stalker was pretty sweet, and then getting the cosmic inspiration. And just making two mana four four fearsomes. This is going to be very useful. We're fine with like a later game. I don't I don't need to be that aggressive. I don't need to like give them a good shield bear block or anything. We're okay. So the charger is my one celestial card right now out of all of these. So if I cast cosmic rays and they kill my charger in response, then it won't do anything. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. More like the destroyer of mana. We just go double unspeakable horror on the shield bearer. Give them one less blocker. Yeah. I know they could use Pale Cascade and save it, but oh well. We'll put a Nocturne back into our deck. Well, so the thing is, like, I'm not going to be casting Cosmic Rays next turn. The reason why I'm doing this is because it is this is like a a blocker for all these Fearsomes. Right? Like, because we're going to make all of our stuff Fearsome with a Nocturne. All right, so they know about this Evershade Stalker. They don't know about the other one. I'll just play this one that they know about. I mean, I think that that worked out. So you you would have used the the horror to break up the spell shield. I mean, I think it worked out. Using the horrors got rid of their fearsome blockers. Okay, you stay alive for now, opponent. For now. That's a great part about these Evershade Stalkers, is like we get to like have like this awesome attack, but then we can still just ruination. And it doesn't matter. What's up, Eclipse Dragon? Shining gifts from the sky. Interesting. 
back up to 10. Yeah, right? Evershade Stalker, Cosmic Inspiration. That does seem kind of busted. I hadn't done that before, but it does seem kind of busted. Uh, Alright, so we're at 13 out of 4. That's an improper fraction. Um, what did the stars reveal, Mother Moon? When you already have, or like, basically when Diana's leveled up, I don't have to play this as Nightfall, right? Like, I can just play Diana first because it will still, like, it still gets that bonus afterwards anyway. So I can just play the Diana first, and that can be my thing to enable Nightfall now. Um, you know, I just, there's basically no difference of playing this Nightfall or not playing a Nightfall right now. Hehehe. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one issue with our deck, is that the games take a while, because, yeah, we are a, a full-on control deck, for sure. Sure. So they can have... Well, like, two of those to stay alive? They're gonna have to have something else. They're still dead right now. Maybe like an Equinox or... yeah. And there we go. So there's our Nightfall Control. Four and one. And my one loss, I just did not play it correctly. I was not patient and um, everything. So, you know, it was a good learning experience, that one loss that we had. But uh, yeah, I, I really like this deck. I think this deck is, is really strong. And I think it has, you know, just kind of the good answers to what everybody else is playing and people aren't going to really know what you're doing like you know like people aren't going to really be expecting ruination that much or like all these black spears but i think this is a great black spear metagame and uh you know we have like these little things that especially this card right here lunari duskbringer is the card that whenever you're mulliganing you really want to see because this card makes a lot of your other cards better but just because you have in your opener don't just like throw this down on turn one you usually want to play because you know getting like playing on turn one and attacking for two doesn't really matter that damage doesn't really matter this is a very late game deck so you usually want to play be able to like play this on you know turn two or turn three you know like play this and then play diana afterwards or play this and then play unspeakable horror you know right like you want to be able to have like the the one drop turn on a nightfall card and then also the dust turn on a nightfall card after that or the dusk help out your spacey sketcher um you know you want you want that kind of thing or you know your dusk help out your eclipse dragon later on right so you don't you don't need to just throw this down on turn one unless you know basically always get get use out of both versions of the card both you know both halves of the card make sure you're getting good use out of both halves um but that's a very important card to have when you're mulliganing so yeah this is this is the kind of deck that you can also tune right like you can keep tuning this depending on what happens with the metagame with, you know, different removal spells and everything. You know, maybe if more if there's more Lee Sins, you know, you can get more more Lee Sin and Fiora, get more Hush in here. Um, you know, if there's more, uh, you know, like Feel the Rush, Trundle, Trindamir, that kind of stuff, you can, you can start playing, um, you know, you can get some like Sunburst in here if you need that. There's definitely a whole lot of ways to get more Lifesteal in here. Um... If, if there's like even more aggro, you know, obviously you have like, you have so many good lifesteal things in here that you could play. Like Solari's Sunforger is a card, um, but then even you could have things like Deadbloom Wander or Doom Beast, especially Doom Beast is a good option. There's just a, a ton of ways that you can heal your Nexus. Withering Whale, Grasp the Undying, uh, you can get more Vile Feast in there. So th there's there's a lot of different things. Guiding Touch, man, this, these regions have ridiculous uh, Nexus healing. There's a lot of ways you can kind of uh, tune this deck depending on what you're facing also. But I really like it. I really like how Diana and Nocturne are just very efficient champions and they're not just like a, a 10 mana thing like a Rillian Soul that doesn't do anything unless you're like already at the late game. Like you can use them to control the board and help uh, run your opponent out of gas. All right, but that's so that's Nightfall Control. A cool uh, new deck that's a little different from what anybody else is playing. So give this one a try. And those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button. Leave those comments. If you if you do give it a try, leave those comments and let me know how you like the deck. Anything that you are uh, struggling with or doing well against 
or anything like that. I'd uh, love to see that. But um, that's it here for Nightfall Control. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.